Hello students. Today we will discuss about the occupational hazards in wool industry and the production of silk. So let's begin. Now what is the meaning of occupational hazard? We have to understand it word by word. First of all, we will understand what is the meaning of occupation. Now, suppose your father is working somewhere with a company. So, we can say that his occupation is service to that particular company. Suppose your father owns a shop or he is running a business. So, we can say that his occupation is business. Now, occupation is nothing but the work which a person is doing to earn his bread. Hazard. Now, what is the meaning of hazard? It means danger involved with something. So, occupational hazard means the danger which is involved with the work which you are doing. Now, there are many kinds of danger associated with a particular job. For example, if someone is working in a company and uh, the office catches fire, so that is one kind of risk. And uh, let's say, let's take an example of an army man. So an army man has a very high risk profile because he has a life threat every now and then. So he has a very high occupational hazard. Now, uh, we, the citizens, common citizens, generally have very low risk in occupation. Let's see what is the occupational hazard in woolen industry, which the workers face. So, in some industries, the workers have to face risks of getting diseases and sometimes even death. Now, these are called occupational hazards. Sorter's disease is an occupational hazard associated with the production of wool. Now the people who sort the wool can get infected by bacteria called anthrax. This bacterium infects the blood of the person which can lead to fatal death. So the people who are involved in the woolen industry uh, uh, we talked about the sorting process. So in that process, a bacteria called anthrax can infect the human beings. So this is the occupational hazard in woolen industry. Now we will see what is the risk associated with this disease. In this picture, I have shown the effect of anthrax on human beings. Now, uh, Anthrax, what it causes, so it causes an itchy bump on the skin with a black center and uh, it is usually contracted from the wool. If it is not treated properly, it can be even fatal. Now, what is the meaning of fatal? Fatal means something which can cause death. It also affects the animal handlers, the people who handles and rears sheep. It can also affect them and uh, this disease is also known as rag picker's disease or wool sorter's disease. That is all for the wool. Now we will study about another kind of fiber which is called silk. Now how the silk is produced? So silk is obtained from silkworms and uh, sericulture. This is a term which is the breeding and raising of silkworms in order to obtain silk from them. Okay, so the silk is obtained from a kind of worm which is known as silkworm and uh, the process of the breeding and raising of silkworm is called sericulture. Now the words breeding and raising I have already discussed earlier. In this image, the life cycle of a silk moth is given. Now moth is nothing but the adult version of a silkworm. 
so what is the first step the female moth lays many tiny eggs after that caterpillars feed on mulberry leaves for about 3 to 4 weeks each of them then spins a cocoon around itself after that the caterpillar changes into a pupa inside the cocoon and finally the pupa becomes an adult moth and this cycle continues so this type of diagram is called life cycle diagram now when the eggs of the silk moth hatch larva are produced and uh, they are also called caterpillar or silk worms the term caterpillar can also be used instead of silk worms the next stage of a caterpillar's life is called the pupa now to enter into this stage the caterpillar weaves a net that can hold it and what is the name of that net yes it is called cocoon which we saw in the earlier figure the caterpillar swings its head in the shape of eight now as it swings its head the fiber is secreted this fiber is made up of protein and as it comes in contact with air it hardens and forms the silk fiber the caterpillar then covers itself with silk and it turns into a pupa which is the adult version of caterpillar or silkworm the covering of the caterpillar is called the cocoon then the caterpillar turns into a silk moth inside this covering the silk thread on the silk yarn is obtained from the cocoon so the cocoon which the caterpillar weaves we get the silk fiber from that cocoon now the different types of silk are obtained because of the different types of silk moths the mulberry silk moth is the most common kind of silk moth that produces soft elastic and shining silk let us revise the process of obtaining silk from silk worms so in the picture you can see a mulberry tree first the female silk moth it will lay the eggs after that the larva or the caterpillar or the silk worm feeds on mulberry leaves after that the caterpillar will start to weave a net like structure which is called cocoon when the cocoon comes in contact with the air it will harden and inside the cocoon the worm will grow bigger in size and it is called pupa just as we studied about the maintenance of sheep we also have to study about the rearing of silk worms there is a process by which the farmers do the rearing of silk worm the silk worm farmers buy the eggs of the silk moth and raise them these eggs are generally large in numbers as a single silk moth can lay about 100 eggs at a time these eggs are stored in an environment having an appropriate temperature humidity and hygienic conditions in order to hatch the larvae out of the eggs the eggs are heated and they are then kept in a bamboo tray this process is conducted generally when the fresh leaves appear on the mulberry trees so that the caterpillar can get enough feed the caterpillar feeds for around 25 to 30 days and then moves into a chamber in a tray to build a cocoon and during the feeding process the caterpillar grows very large in size just as the processing of wool has uh, around six steps starting from shearing to the coloring of wool the processing of si uh, silk also has some steps 
Firstly, as the cocoons are acquired, they are kept under the sun or boiled so that the silk fibers can separate out from them. Now you can see here in the image, a worker is boiling the cocoons in a container. What happens when we boil the cocoon, the silk fibers which are hardened, they get separated. So the worker directly take the, takes the cocoons and put it in hot boiling water. The workers also have to take precautions because the water is very very hot and it is boiling. So it can cause severe burns. So burning is also one kind of occupational hazard in the boiling of cocoons. After boiling, the silk fibers get separated. So here comes the next step which is called the reeling of the silk. The reeling of the silk is a process in which the cocoon's threads are processed to be used as silk. Now I will show you the image that how the reeling of silk happens. In this image you can see a device with the help of which the reeling of silk takes place. So what they will do is they will take out a fiber, a thread from the cocoon when the silk fibers are getting separated and they will start pulling it out. And after that the thread which is obtained is rolled into bundle. So this is how the reeling of silk happens. So the silk fibers thus obtained are drawn and rolled into threads. They are also given the desired color. Here are the rolls of the silk threads. Now the reason why people like silk, it is because the silk is very glazy, glossy in nature and uh, it is also very soft. So students, this is the end of our chapter. I hope you found this chapter interesting. To make it more interesting, I have given you an assignment. So you have to collect different types of fabrics and stick it in your notebook and label them. After that, you have to find the names of different types of wool and different types of silk and the region or the place in which they are produced and make a table of it. And yes, I'll say it again. Don't forget to read the book. We'll meet next time. Till then, take care.